I'm a Vietnam veteran. And what he's doing to this country, I can't stand it. Nobody's speaking up. We veterans are. That's what we're here for today. 90-year-old men who fought for our country denied access to a memorial that the American people built. Open-air memorial, no excuse. Thoroughly disgusted. This is for our, our veterans, and the United States government has no right. USA! USA! Well, that protest then spread to the White House, where folks dumped the barricades they had removed from outside of those memorials. Our exclusive video, this time catching the confrontation as the crowd is met by police officers, some of whom push them back. Watch. And now this demonstration is under attack, as some question the motives of these Americans, suggesting the Tea Party was behind it all. My next guest was there, start to finish. Dennis Michael Lynch is a documentary filmmaker and creator of TheyComeToAmerica.com. Dennis, it's been amazing to watch the coverage of this event, which unquestionably had some Tea Party members there, some politicians there, but had a lot of vets there and regular Americans who were upset about the barricades being put in front of these memorials. But if you, you might not even know that if you watch channels other than Fox, because they want you to believe it's all about the so-called fringe. You were there. Tell us what you saw. The other channels um, upset me. And they upset me because they're feeding into the divisive behavior that the White House has created. I watched men and women come together at that memorial. It was beautiful. There were men there with no legs, with no arms, crying like you just saw. How dare anybody, how dare anybody use them as a political pawn or a way of trying to boost up their own ratings. If it weren't for these men and women, there would be no television. I'm appalled by it. I'm appalled by it. And here's the biggest thing we have. We have a blemish. Because the government shutdown is going to go away sooner or later, Megan. But the blemish that is on that memorial will stay with us forever. We will never be able to look at that memorial the same way again. Mm -hmm. And that is wrong. And yet, if you watch the coverage of this on our competitors today, these are the images. Let me show you the images that are wall wallpapering the other channels. And, and these are images from the event, so they, they are legitimate uh, to show when covering it. But signs calling for the impeachment of President Obama. Um, signs suggesting uh, the, this man with the Confederate flag. So far as I can tell, this is the only uh, man who had a Confederate flag. And then this soundbite from Larry Klayman, who is the founder of Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch, which has basically been on a loop. Listen. We are now ruled, quote unquote, by a president who bows down to Allah. I call upon all of you to wage a second American nonviolent revolution, to use civil disobedience, and to demand that this president leave town to get out, to put the Quran, to put the Quran down, to get up off his knees, and to figuratively come up with his hands out. Now I ask you whether Larry and the people holding those signs and that con Confederate flag are representative of what you saw this weekend. What I saw this weekend was a collection of thousands upon thousands of veterans that if their president Barack Obama was to fall down on the ground, whether they agree with his policies or disagree, they would protect his life. Those were the people at that memorial. And it is a shame that we find ourselves at a place in time where America is going to learn all of its lessons the hard way. Yeah, Megan, Megan, I was there from start to finish. I was hoping to come on your show tonight to tell you that this was a spark, that spark we've been waiting for, because we had it with the, the uh, two million bikers to D.C. I covered that as well, okay? That was a thing of beauty, but it didn't get its, it didn't get its time aired. I also watched the truckers 
They failed on day one, but they came back and rallied on day two. But nobody's talking about that. And these vets, they came from all over the country. We should be celebrating the fact that these guys are coming from all over the country, and instead we're using it to get ratings. If CNN and MSNBC want ratings, cover the fact that the truckers came down the road outside that memorial and that vets were going up and throwing $20 bills in the window and saying, thank you, here's gas money. I saw grown men cry, including myself. We had 90-year-old men in a bus for an hour and a half. All the media had gone home already, okay? I was there. They were left in the street. The cops wouldn't let them go up 500 feet and drop them off in front of the memorial. And the, these, these men are so old, they didn't realize that there was anything going wrong. They thought this was the norm. Mm -hmm. And it breaks your heart. And then, you know, they, they talk about, like, these Tea Party wackos. There are no Tea Party wackos there. There were no, you know, let me tell you, there were a couple of people there who were for Obama screaming profanities at Sarah Palin. And you know what? I really wish I have nothing against Sarah Palin or Cruz or anybody. I'm for America. I wish they didn't come. Mm -hmm. I wish there were no politicians there. We didn't need that. That's what the vet group said. I th we didn't need it. And, and it's not the man who organized it. You know, it, he, the man who organized it, they, they're throwing him under the bus, too. I met this man. Not once did he talk to me about anything with Tea Party or politics or nothing. In fact, here's something that's not covered. Those veterans were standing out in the rain, and it was supposed to start at 9 o'clock. And I went up to Larry. I said, Larry, what's going on? Why aren't we starting this? And he says, because we have to wait for Sarah Palin. I said, give me that microphone. These men are waiting. And I went and I opened the ceremonies. Larry didn't say, oh, no, I got to follow, you know, a policy. He handed it over. Mm -hmm. Everybody was there for a positive Talk about message. about different Larry? Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. Larry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can't remember. Larry's the organizer. Not Larry Clayman. No, sound no. We just and then when I was watching these 90-year-old these men get wheelchaired down a, a wet street, I saw the barricades going to the White House, and I ran to that White House. I was there before any other camera, and I was there after the cameras left. Mm -hmm. I did not see one veteran act in a way that was unbecoming. What, and, but what was their message? Now, it's been so drowned out by so many outlets. What was the message they were bringing? Megan, this is what they did. When they carried those barricades, they were carrying America. When they took those barricades and they threw them in front of the White House, they were throwing the frustration of every American who has lost it because this is the way that D.C. operates, divisive. Until this country comes back together, we don't have a chance. And the only way that this country is coming back together is through the American people. The politicians aren't going to do it. And I will not accept this weekend or the last week with the truckers as a failure. This was a spark. There is a movement taking place, a nonviolent American movement taking place. And I can tell you, Megan, you're going to have me back on this show a hundred times because it's, we're going to keep on going and keep on going until things change in the right direction. Well, thank you for documenting uh, the message that Sorry those vets for losing were bringing. It a little bit. Not at all, Dennis. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. All the best.